I will be showing you a simple guide to cells in the GCSE Biology. All living organisms are based on units, which are called cells. In biology, we often draw unspecialised cells to show the features that are common to most cells. A great way to remember important facts and diagrams in biology is by visualising them. Here is a diagram of an unspecialised animal cell which has commonly identifiable features, as I shall shortly be labelling. The black blob-like structure in this diagram is the nucleus. The several other dots shown are called mitochondria. Note, this is the plural of the word, with the singular being one mitochondrion. The area surrounding these structures is filled with a substance called cytoplasm, and the outside line of the cell is called the cell membrane. Now, let's take a look at an unspecialised plant cell to see how that compares to the animal one we just looked at. As you can immediately tell, there are some extra structures which we did not see in the previous cell, beginning with this cell wall. This next structure is the cell membrane, as we've seen before. This is then followed by chloroplasts, which is a feature common to many, but not all, plants. Next up are the mitochondria, nucleus and cytoplasm, which have remained common to both the animal cell and the plant cell. This structure in the centre of the cell is the vacuole, and is surrounded by the tonoplast. So you've seen the different parts of the cells, but what do they actually do? Well, let's begin with the cytoplasm, which is an aqueous, meaning water-based, gel, where reactions in the cell take place. Take note of the word aqueous, because it will appear again when we do chemistry. The cell membrane is a selectively permeable barrier almost, which is able to control what enters and leaves the cell. The nucleus of a cell contains chromosomes, which are molecules of DNA that carry the genetic code. The nucleus is also the mastermind behind the cell, as it controls all of the cell's activity. The vacuole, which we saw in the plant cell, is a fluid-filled space which is surrounded by the tonoplast. The vacuole contains cell sap, which is a solution of sugars and mineral ions. The chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis and contains chlorophyll. This is what gives plants their green colour. The cellulose cell wall is fully permeable to water, unlike the cell membrane we saw earlier and it gives the cell its structure. The cell wall also prevents the cell from bursting, which is, I'm sure you will agree, a pretty important feature to have. Mitochondria are present in all eukaryotic cells, technical word for cells that have a nucleus. They are the site of aerobic respiration. This is respiration with air. We can put aside the unspecialised cells now, and focus on the ones which are specialised. In multicellular organisms, cells become specialised to perform particular functions. For example, a nerve cell, which has a long part of the cell to carry nerve impulses. And there's the leaf palisade cell, which is packed full of chloroplasts for photosynthesis. With specialised cells come the levels of organisation. Starting from smallest and working our way up, we first have an organelle, such as a nucleus or chloroplast. The next step up is a cell, such as a white blood cell. 
Then we have a tissue, which is a group of similar cells working to perform a common function, such as muscle tissue. Next is an organ, which is a variety of tissues working together to perform a common function, such as the heart. This is when we build our system, which is a group of organs working together to perform a common function, such as the nervous system. Then these systems work together to create the body. Complete! If you like this video, please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching!